We have the map veto for you, and unlike the very first play day, there are no auto-banned maps. In this case, Consulate and Border are going to be banned because Tempo Storm played on Border and LG played on Consulate. So with the first week, each team bans three maps. Every week after, it comes down to what maps were previously played. While well, Clubhouse, Cafe, Coastline, and Villa are gone, so we're going to see Bank. North America did not see Bank in its very first play day, so this is going to be the first time that NA plays it, though it has been played in other regions right. up to this point. We actually, I think we just saw it um, in The Europe. last match was Chaos 4s just a couple hours ago when it was on Bank, so we ended on Bank for EU Play Day 2, and we start on Bank for NA Play Day 2. What, like three hours later? Something like that. Something along those lines. So, tiny, tiny difference. Yeah, so... Not much. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting one. Bank is a really good map, I think, uh, especially for teams like these. It's gonna be a lot of ground for both of these squads to cover, um, and having a refined clear of the roamers is going to, I think, be the biggest mark for the attacking squads, especially because I fully expect each of these teams, while on defense, to defend basement and roam top floor at least one round to see how it works. I'm not gonna guarantee you it'll happen, but with squads like these, I think. It, it probably will. I don't imagine it's going to come down to that, you know, just everybody in the site, slow, structured, based around the default plan. Though, we will see a little bit of that, obviously, on Bank. I think Bank is one of my favorite maps to cast right now, because mm. whereas before we used to see CCTV lockers down below was very routine, I like the way that the teams have made changes on CEO. I like the way that the teams are now starting to experiment more with open area. I like the way that we're seeing more archives tellers that involve deep roams downstairs or aggressively holding above with only one person on site. There's a lot of flexibility there. I think it's going to be, between these two teams, a lot on the line for Tempo Storm. They have to bring their A game. For LG, that aggressiveness that we see repeatedly, they're probably going to do quite well. I don't expect it to be a blowout one way or another, but what do you think? Who's going to win? Ooh. That's very lopsided. That is exceptionally so, yeah. That, um... It's one of the most lopsided we've had so far. Not and not the most, I think, so far. This we just season. saw Liquid yesterday. Yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty. Eighty-seven percent or whatever it was. Eighty-seven, eight, and five. Checking. It was eighty-seven, eight, and five. You're exactly right. Five for the draw, eight for the other team, which was Ints. Um, so yeah, this is not the most one-sided, but it's pretty high up there. A lot of people think the Luminosity is going to be the favored child out of this. The big reason for that, Parker actually brought up earlier, and it's that since getting into Pro League, Tempo hasn't really done anything to prove themselves as like a, a team that's here to play. They have not beaten a pro league team since they haven't they done the relegations. So this there's a lot of weight on their shoulders. E United was probably their best shot because both of these teams came in. Mm. Keep in mind that uh, yeah, the E United squad was at one point known as Obey Alliance. Tempo Storm was at one, pa at one point known as Two-Faced. So they both got in on relegations. Kindred spirits, I think you could even call them. Very uh, similar comparisons I between I would these say two so. teams. Yeah. On bank, first ban is going to be a hard breacher. That's going to be Luminosity banning out Hibana, and nothing surprising whatsoever with a hard breach ban. Yeah, you expect that on bank. I mean, it was Slash who very famously said, having all three hard breachers up while trying to defend on bank is not a lot of fun. Slash was also, if I recall, further back, now this is a long time ago, back when he used to be on Rogue, I think he was really against like the introduction of Habana in the first place because it changed a whole lot about how we how we saw the hard breach meta. This is of course before the ban phase was introduced. So that was back when you could bring a, a Habana and a Thermite continuously over and over and over again. And there was less things to stop you from opening, like drop downs, for example. There was no K or Kaid rather. So there were a lot of different tools that were not in play. And I think we've got a more well refined a siege now if we're talking about the hard breach meta, in that you can just get rid of a Habana. There she goes. Bye. And uh, Kaid is an option if you want to make it even harder for the enemy, but then Maverick's a counter, so there's layers to it. And it makes things like, like you said, it makes maps like Bank, for example, really deeply interesting because you have to evolve your strategy rather than saying stagnant and letting the typical default plant C4s, gas canisters play out. Now, mind you, that actually is very interesting when it's played well. Um, we were actually talking about it when we were casting G2 Attackers last, because I believe it was on bank. Um, and they were going for those default plants just inside of server, or just outside of server, I should say. And it was deeply interesting because they were countering the C4, the pixel angle, they're coming from above, and everything was just, you know, the layers were coming together. So it's, it's not like that's not fun, but diversity is one of the beautiful parts of Siege, and one of the things that makes a map 
actually be a good competitive map. Because when teams can figure out other ways to accomplish the same goal, which is winning, then, yeah, you know that map's not played out. So we're gonna go to the basement first. Uh, it'll be Luminosity on defense. They have brought, let's see, three denial operators, Smoke, Maestro, Pulse. You've got your your Legion and your Jaeger as uh, peripheral support, so to speak. It looks like uh, the Legion set up some traps, maybe, inside of the garage. I'm guessing that's gonna be uh, some, some traps to try and help the barbed wire. Yeah, two, one on each side. Luminosity really doesn't want Temple, Stor Temple Storm to come into the garage. They're saying no entry here. Uh, you're not allowed. I'm curious to see if they put an evil eye in there. Crazy when he was on Rise Nation back when they were in Pro League. That's a throwback for you. And then when there he was seated on Orglis as well, he liked to take up a lot of space in the garage in the later portions of the round. So always keep an eye out for that one. He's on a very similar role. That was when he used to play Zofia in IQ. Now, as you can see, he's obviously playing Zofia. It's an entry towards the skylight for Tempo Storm. And nobody really roaming from Luminosity. So you had mentioned that the unpredictability factor from Luminosity maybe being up top, maybe roaming on that first or second floor. I don't know if it's going to be this round, but I think it might later on. But there is a reinforcement to the left of Crazy on that oh, yeah? wall. Yeah, at least it looked like it. Yeah, there's a, a single reinforced panel up there. Also, the reason they reinforced that, I'm guessing, is because they don't want the attackers to be able to hold the main stairs from tellers. Yep. They want them to have to play in the hallway or in the garage, or sorry, not the garage, rather, the um, elevator. I don't know why I was drawing a blank on that. And that's a little bit more exposed if you're an attacker. So I, I get that from Luminosity. If they have the extra reinforcement, why not? Go for it. Goes one of the hatches with the exothermic charge. You've got a Maverick as well in Filthy's hands, and he will likely be used to oh. open up. Oh. Well, it's because of the time, right? Scanning. Yeah. They figure drop gets opened, it's half the round wasted. We'll leave. Immediately call off the push into server. And you know, there's somebody coming from blue because now Butters will trigger one of the goo mines at the top of server stairs. Graders as well through dirt tunnels. You can see server control, which was relinquished by Luminosity just a couple moments ago as they all scamper towards the back of their site. Allows Tempo Storm clear passage on in. I really like what I just saw from Luminosity. You know, there were three people in server. They could have fought it out, but they saw the time. They recognized the drop getting open. They made the right call. And now they've got just so much muscle on the site where they can deny Tempo any kind of pressure from main stairs, for example. You saw their uh, Luminosity tempting Tempo on those stairs. They eventually fell off it. Filthy's going to open up the Maverick Hole. Now, this is to deny things like C4. If you can get them, gas canisters, but those are hard to catch midair. And also just the general peak from red. Dream is going to attempt the plant to see if somebody was going to have any denial. Well, there's a toxic canister. Dream will start to suck in a lot of damage, but he'll just trudge on through. Almost die in the process, and yes, Doodle will be able to get it. He'll be credited with the very first kill as well. The Temple Storm completes the objective. A push up main stairs from Rex and caught by Creators. Cannot beat Doodle, though, as that smoke will just continue to charge on up. Luminosity with the numbers advantage as the, the clock is about to strike one third of the way through. The Filthy will sit over top of the Diffuser. Who's going to peek on out? There's still a drone on, and then there, Factor wins the fight against Crazy. He's on the second floor, and it's a 4v2 now. But Timer is ticking down ever so slightly. Both members of Tempo Storm are hidden deep away. This is going to be a major challenge. Filthy with two, looking for a third. The Diffuser is almost certainly out of reach. Filthy pushes up, Diffuse going down. Filthy grabs one, can't get the other. But is there enough time? No. Slash doesn't even bother to blow himself up. The clock will give Tempo Storm round number one on an absolute brawl. That was a really good round from Luminosity. Big moment there was Slash not to, uh, not throwing a C4. He figured that the smoke would be able to deny the plant. Now, I gotta say, we did see Tempo take a pretty big gamble when they decided to stick that plant. It probably shouldn't have worked out for Dream, but it did. And yes, it cost him his life. Doodle did manage to get the kill, but too little, too late. I will say, though, Luminosity's retake upstairs was very well executed. They lost one person on the initial retake. They took no risks with the second person in open area small office, opening the drop down above that Sophia, and then they had to top control. The only problem was is that there was only two people upstairs. The other two on the attacking side were holding the post plant from the server and the server stairs. Attackers so not enough time for the defenders they because they were so methodical in trying to clear out open, they couldn't manage to get all of the players playing by server. Now, if there had been more of a presence in open area on the drop downs from Tempo Storm, that very likely would have worked out better for Luminosity, but Poor or the wrong calculation, I guess. Not necessarily poor on Luminosity's side. Even though the retake was really well executed, 
better positioning from Tempo Storm, and that gamble of the Diffuse Plant paying off means that we get the first round favor of the attackers. Now, Luminosity will go back to the bottom floor for an attempt number two. I think they recognize how close they came to winning that last round. They just, they want to be able to get that point and move on. Attacker's objective is to locate the bomb and defuse it. They were ultimately cut down by the hold that was happening inside of servers by the Maverick and a play that Slash has done many times when Luminosity is attacking. So it's not so fun when it happens back to you now, is it? No. Additionally, even though you'd cleared out the three members of Tempo that were watching over that Diffuser, including Dream, as you've noted, who died for that Diffuser to go down, both remaining members of Tempo Storm were playing inside of Dirt and inside of Blue. You need to take the fight to them around corners and angles that you might not be prepared to do any damage to. Especially if you don't have a shotgun handy, then, well, they can hear you coming and they'll probably end up beating you. So what are the changes that we can look for from Luminosity? What are the things that are going to be completely different? Well, no Legion that is played by LG. They've instead swapped over to that Mozzie. Everything else looks to be about the same. So the Mozzie can do a couple different things. One, he, of course, he's going to slow down the droning. Two, he has a C4 if he decided to bring it, and can thus deny the plant. And whereas the Legion's just going to give you more information. I don't think that Luminosity really needs the info. I think with the Pulse Maestro combo, they've got enough. So they're feeling just more on the denial of information to the attackers and the... Oh, the nade is stopped by Rexen's wide peak. He heard the pin pulled and he peeked wide. Got it. And now, advantage Luminosity. He'll stay despite the uh, drop down getting opened up. That's, that is really uh, dangerous, but Slash will actually make it work as he gets aggressive with the C4. The heartbeat detector working out great for Slash there. I think that was through the drop down as well. Yes. So. Tempo Storm have now found themselves trailing before they can even begin to approach and execute onto the main site. There was that Mozzie drone that just got shot by Dream sitting on top of the plants in Skylight that was being used primarily by Rexen to continuously give him information, playing very selfishly. Something that you see a Valkyrie do, where Valkyrie to be unbanned by throwing up cams in Skylight, possibly over even by open area. Rexen disoriented, but he springs in! Dream is down, and two for Luminosity on these stairs. Rex is looking for a third, but he's not going to be able to outgun Crazy. Losing 50 HP in the process, but the Zofia will trudge on. The big problem is now only Hard Breacher is filthy, and he's now dead too. Factor from way back, downtown, Diffuser relinquished in Tempo Storm. It's a crazy in a 1v4. I mean, job done there by Rexon. He really did hold out pretty long on the staircase, despite the drop down getting opened. And he had great support from his teammates. I love to see that from a team where they decide to commit to the play that one of their players, almost solo, is trying to hold out on. So Rexon says, I'm going to hold server stairs. I'm staying here. And Slash says, all right, I got your back. And he gets the C4, allows that stay in the stairs to be more successful. Now, uh, we are going to see Doodle get the final kill there with the smokes. But we expected that. Moving on, Luminosity, one round up. Tempo Storm, also round one, one round up. So just an even match so far. Extremely aggressive there by Luminosity and the way that they combated the hatchwork and the way that they were able to hold the top of blue stairs. I think that's really what it boils down to. You can't get Rexon out of there. The ADS that was positioned at the top of blue stairs didn't get burnt. It took a while for us to actually see was it creators throw an EMP and take out the utility that was guarding that Jaeger. Tempo Storm should have been much faster especially with how quickly they were able to determine Jaeger's position behind that shield. Attackers Another thing is the weird, uh, these, both of these rounds so far have hinged on one thing. Uh, that last round hinged on Rexen playing at the top of the stairs. The round prior, the first, uh, it was all about the Thermite Dream managing to get the plant despite uh, uh, breathing in the smoke and starting to, you know, die and eventually, yes, dying to that very same smoke. Um, but he got it with one second to spare, maybe. You know, those two factors, and here we go, the, we got two rounds based on just those. And of course there are there are other things aside from that. There's a lot of layers to it, like the support that you saw from the rest of Luminosity to help Rex in at the stairs, like the post-plant hold from Tempo. They managed to make it happen, even though Luminosity uh, put up a pretty good clear um, to try and retake. Uh, so there's, there's other things. It's not all just these two points, but I think that's the start of the end for both of those rounds. And I'm, I'm curious to see if we're going to uh, have that as a trend moving forward, if these teams are going to continue to win on just one little point, or if it's going to be more of a, uh, I guess, an orchestra, more conducted. 
I'm not really sure how to put that. What I will say is that thus far, we've seen some pretty good siege, and I'm excited to, to have this play out. I hope it goes the full distance. Though, I mean, most of the matches recently have been. I think, uh, I think this season of Pro League, we haven't really had many blowout matches. We have had some, but not very many. This doesn't seem like one. No, it does not. No presence whatsoever from Luminosity over on Skylight Stairwell, which will allow that exothermic charge of Dream to go off without contest. Mm. That alone is a very big move from Tempo to be able to open up the site wide with a minute off of the clock. And now a second one is going to go too. You can see Slash's position, but he continuously turns his back to what is a very easy pick for any of the attackers. Ooh. Slash almost dies to Crazy on Repel as the call is made that there's a rotate from the Jaeger, but Crazy is not able to get all of it. Slash is going to live on only 10 HP for the remainder of the round. It was very dangerous for Slash. The reason he was staying there was because the windows had been opened up and he heard Crazy on Repel. But as soon as he got droned, he knew he had to move. He had no choice. And he barely made it out. So good for Slash that he made it out, but it was uh, with just a little bit of HP, as you said. Now, that's one of the most important evil eyes gone, since this is a uh, box, or rather, square attack. Some say Skylight. Having the Evil Eye there would have been very helpful. Rexin will eat an impact from the lifeline to the face and be put on about 50 HP. Really rough timing from Rexin there as he pops up just about a second too late. Yeah. All of the utility from Luminosity is being picked apart by Tempo Storm, and this is proving to be a very good way for Tempo Storm to be able to get a clearer sight in towards the actual site itself. This should probably pick a different word there. Mm. Doodle right now in a one-man last stand. He uh, misses the impact grenade. and Instead, he'll take out the deployable shield. He'll re-engage, gets flashed inside of Custodian, and well, he could be a dead man if somebody pushes in. The longer this timer continues to run down, unless Temple Storm can start to get a couple picks here, it's very much going to favor Luminosity. So there's been no opening death, nor no opening pick. Oh. Dream getting the plant down, and nobody seems to be any the wiser. This might be Tempo Storm once again getting the Diffuse off. Yes, quite successfully. Both teams trade one. Factor comes alive with the second kill and is immediately counter defusing. He gets taken out by Crazy. So, no, not going to be much from him. Doodles inside of the site. Snaps on to Custodian but can't do anything as it's Rexin in a 1v3, but he's down in the lobby. His ascent up the main stairs is going to be caught by anybody playing on Repel, and he is not going much farther than the top of these stairs. Too many eyes on him. Takes Crazy off of Repel. Diffuser's at halfway. You're going to have to hurry with this clock, young man, if you want to make anything work of it. Doesn't know where his targets are. And the Diffuser is only a second or two away from being out of reach. Given Rexon's position, that'll be the round, and Tempo Storm will take it yet again. Another successful Diffuse going down. Doesn't matter if they get the kill or not. The objective would have been enough. Tempo Storm up 2-0, or 2-1. So that's a good start for Tempo. And a really well-executed round for Tempo as well. The denial that uh, Luminosity had in place for the plant behind the CEO desk was just not enough. Uh, the really tricky thing is that desk, oh boy, it, it causes a lot of problems. It's, there's a lot of cover for the attackers there to get a plant off. And one of the best ways you can deny it is C4ing from below. We didn't see any of that from Luminosity. No C4 underneath the desk, um, despite the fact that Tempo did not clear out underneath either. So it was an option, just one that wasn't utilized from LG. Um, I will say, however, Big thing about trying to roam down there is while you can open the drop down in uh, in paper, it's a very dangerous rotation. So like if you want to late rotate downstairs when you're holding CEO to see forward from below, then you're gonna have to you're gonna have a lot of trouble. And if you're hard roaming downstairs, then it's you're gonna clear it out by the attackers. So no matter what, it's not an easy thing to accomplish. But it's one of the most surefire ways to deny a plant behind CEO desk. The Evil Eye got uh, eliminated because I think it was EMP'd, I believe, because it had its shutters open. It didn't seem to be zapping, so it was EMP'd and shot by the Thermite. That would be my guess, anyway. Um, and, yeah, I mean, other than that, they didn't really have any way to stop a plant behind the CEO desk, or Luminosity didn't try, I should say. Another big thing, the North Repel, uncountered from LG. Really well played from Tempo Storm. I believe it was crazy, specifically, on that North Repel put a lot of pressure on the defense. Now, we are going to go to Tellers. No more repeat, uh, repeat rather, of CEO, so they're just they're n they're having none of it. Not going to go to CEO anymore. Um, and I, I, I respect that for LG, that they're going to try and stick to something different because they can't figure out the top floor. That was a really efficient attack from Tempo, and shouldn't give them any opportunities to do that again. No. So Luminosity, both times that they have 
uh, given up an objective to Tempo Storm, it's been because they've played so far back as well. We saw that in CCTV, oh, most notably when they uh, area. Okay. Jumped, jumped back into the site. Rexy gets the early pick and Creators silences him immediately. And I was going to say, <laughs> I was literally going to say this, and I'm glad that they did this. What I was going to say is that both times that uh, LG has lost the objective, towards the Diffuse going down from Tempo Storm. Mm -hmm. They have answered back, or the last time, they answered back by being very aggressive. And they did just that this time. You can see the roam that was set up upstairs with the impacts that would have allowed the Vigil of Rexon to continuously stay up there and be as ever elusive as you expect a Vigil to be. He gets an early pick for his troubles. He takes out Crazy. I think that's great. To take out a Zelfia when you're looking at a first floor defense of Luminosity and Crazy, who's the most experienced player that we see on Tempo Storm, very much worthwhile. Yeah, Crazy especially has been playing uh, well in this match, too, which is worth pointing out. Butters trying to open up from above using his hammer. Very successful so far. Lots of angles denied to the defense. Now, one thing we will have to say, uh, take note of, is that this is an open area Teller's Hold. So the way that the defenders are trying to hold on to this site is actually from afar. Factor with the C4 to deny the exothermic, and no, he missed. Sounds like the wall got opened up. Nice try there from Factor, but uh, it was just a little short. You can see the explosion right near where Dream is. Couldn't throw it far enough to get the exothermic charge. Uh, so that's a wall opened, but as you can see, Hyena, pretty far back there. He's going to have an ACOG and a lot of angle to work with to deny the entry through that wall when he decides to peek it. He's not actually peeking it right now, but, you know, he, he can when he commits to it. Dream trying to get into the bomb site. He will have cover behind the printer when he goes for that push. So there is a plant spot open to Tempo. Nade coming in to cover the rotation. Here comes the plant from Dream, C4 to deny it. Creators will get the refrag from Small, but Doodle is going to add to LG's tally as Filthy hits the floor. Only 30 seconds, and it's been a very quiet round with the exception of that burst right at the start. It takes a lot of time for Tempo to dot their I's and cross their T's and get in closer towards the site. One member of Luminosity sitting in open area will be in a contest with Creators if he pushes on up. Diffuser is relinquished. Butters gets a kill on the Hyena, so you're back at 2v2, but Doodle's position is given away. Where is the sledge? He's going to swing out, but there's Factor and Doodle there together, and LG will work in tandem with one another and shut down the objective from Tempo Storm. No Diffuser will be planted, and LG will tie it up 2-2. Two to two. So I got to say, the attempted plant there was kind of interesting because instead of trying to plant by printer, which is where you would usually see the plant go down, right nestled in that corner. Uh, the Thermite tried to run across Tellers to get to the reinforcement, which I can understand because it's, you know, it's a reinforcement, right? It's hard cover, uh, whereas you can shoot through that little panel next to the printer. But it ended up getting that Thermite killed, and the Diffuser was dropped somewhere where the attack couldn't retrieve it without uh, incurring casualties. And that's exactly what happened. We saw Tempo try to retake that diffuser, try to go for a plant. They put Defenders all protect your bombs from being of their players to try and get into Tellers and, you know, cover plant, get that down. And uh, it didn't work. So the off-site hold there from Luminosity working out pretty well. It's really interesting to see um, strategies like that actually pay off. You know, it's um, not necessarily against the meta. You know, it's not something we've never seen before. It is uncommon. But, uh, you know, it's an older strategy, technically speaking. The first time I think I saw that was season season four, maybe? And here we are on season 11. I don't know, it was a long time ago. Pretty far back. You know, Bank is actually one of the few maps that has been in comp for... The whole time? Like, the whole time, yeah. The whole time. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse Let me just check, actually. Because I can't. Take a gander. I think it might be like one of the only maps because we've we've not got many to be honest. And looks like it's so it's three. It's bank. Oh no no no! Clubhouse took a Club, uh, Clubhouse took a break, didn't it? No no no! It didn't. It just got reworked. Bank consulate Clubhouse, and that's it. Oregon recently left. Bank, like I said, bank is one of my favorite matches or maps to um mm -hmm. to cast. Oh yeah, it's up there. But yeah, it's just bank Clubhouse and consulate, and that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, this is one of the OG maps. It's also one of the ones that, while it's been around for so long, it's had ups and downs. Moments where teams like it, moments where nobody wants to play it. Um, regions, they change their opinions on it, and its meta continues to evolve, and that's one of the things that I think you could see, you safely say makes Bank a good map. Even though some people don't. don't poor, like one, poor one out for Yacht, who was only in there for one season. Same with Favelle. 
I actually played Favela. I know. <laughs> Way back. I guess. Yacht, Yacht and Favela were only in for a single season apiece, and then they were uh, relegated and vanquished to the, uh, the Shadow Room. Played Plane, too. Remember that one? Craters with a shotgun takes out Rexon. All right. Um, Wait, he's got a shotgun on Thatcher. Thatcher has the shotgun. Well, so this is a play Thatcher. that was designed almost exclusively to take Rexon out yeah. at the top of the main stairs. How do you grab server control really quickly? Well, you set up with a shotgun. The problem is, is that unless you've got something else in mind for Craters, what is he going to do for the rest of the round? Well, actually, it, it might not even matter because at worst it's a 4v4 now if you take Craters out of the equation. He's, as long as he uses his EMPs to good effect, Creators could die right now, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And you could even you could put him on the drop down. To be honest, if you put him on the drop down, he could cover pretty effectively. Yep. Very much done his job. Even put him in where cra uh, Crazy's playing right now. So that's where I would put him. Or an entry from main stairs. That makes sense too. Yeah. So this is good forethought from Tempo Storm here. Now continuously drone out the site. You can see how deep back Luminosity is playing. Down goes Filthy to Factors MP5 suppressed. Doesn't make a ton of noise. Default cam still up. Toxic canister thrown out. Dream is going to take some damage, but he'll back up. Now, here's the big thing for Dream. Even that one tick of damage means that if he tries to plant through a Toxic Canister, he will die. He takes just a little bit more damage as well. There's another Toxic Canister. 30 seconds left means that there will be a bit of a void when it comes to full coverage from the smoke canisters. Mm -hmm. Factors far back watching the main stairs. If anybody engages, including that shotgun of Craters, well, he's as good as gone. It's an unfortunately timed team kill as Dream is taken out by Butters and Tempo Storm will now find themselves down one. Butters having the diffuser in hand. Down goes Creators to the SMG of Doodle. In his Butters, they're gonna have to go for frags here and Tempo Storm knows this. Looking the wrong way is Butters. Crazy picks up two, but he'll get downed. Zofia can withstand, that's why he hasn't been killed off yet. He's gonna try to go for it, but Doodle above finishes him off. And LG will take the lead. Their very first lead of the series, 3-2. So it looks like that shotgun on the main stairs was actually just being used to hold the main stairs, deny a push up and a retake from the uh, defenders, which also makes sense. Um, I really like the setup from Temple Storm. I gotta commend them for that because it was, it was different, you know, and um, it made sense. There was a logic to it. It didn't work out as well as Tempo wanted it to. The big thing is that they didn't have nearly enough tools to deal with the counterplant that was being employed by Luminosity. We're talking the gas canisters, which were masterfully utilized. Um, I believe it was, well, Factor's playing Smoke right now, but wasn't it Doodle who was playing it down in the basement? Could have sworn. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, yes, masterly, masterfully utilized by Luminosity uh, were the smokes, and the evil eyes were dispatched quickly, but there was also Echo Yokai's in play. So lots of information on the side of Luminosity, and since they had all that info to work with, they're having a pretty good time. Interestingly, Bank, if you take a look at the stats on your screen right now, apparently, and by the way, the image is right this time, because it's Bank, apparently was an attacker-sided map in the last season. And I say attacker-sided, 1% really isn't, but uh, that is an interesting statistic, and it is one of the reasons why I think people are starting to really like Bank. Again, this is a type of map that has serious ups and downs. There are moments where everyone is calling for Bank to get removed throughout Siege history, um, way back. There are moments where everyone is singing its praises. It's regional, it's seasonal, it's, you know, dependent on a lot of different factors. But right now, people seem to like it. I like it a lot. Me too. It's a, and as you said, it's a really good map to cast. It is a good map to cast. There are certain times where there are maps where things tend to happen the same, and you're like, uh, kind of know going on in what it's going to be like. It's good that Oregon's gone. Bank is... Well, I wasn't going to name names, Michael. You don't need to make Oregon feel badly. But anyway. Well, you know what? It should feel bad. It's a bad map. Great state, though. I lived in Oregon for six years. Yeah, you have an uh, Oregon Ducks shirt. Yes. Go Ducks. There you go. Uh, ducks fly beavers, um, the other thing. Ducks fly together. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not from the Oregon Ducks, but... Anyway, it's another CEO defense. The final one for Luminosity is it's their very final defense. Period. Not just their final defense of CEO upstairs. Tempo Storm was successful the only time they went here, and it was an experiment that Luminosity did not intend to have a second go at. Of the main stairs is Butters, as Lobby has been determined to be completely clear. And the only thing that you can hear is that suppressed shots of the MP5 from Hyena. Oh, this is such a good yokai in the main lobby and overlooked by Tempo, but they'll get one kill on Hyena downstairs. So, okay, it's there. It's going to be there. The yokai will be there. It'll be utilized, but it's not going to be stunning anybody or moving. 
All it is is an invisible cam. And given that Tempo hasn't been running any, any Intel ops like IQ mm -hmm. outside of the Thatcher, well, it might not actually be that effective. As Tempo Storm finds two kills for their trouble to crack this round wide open. Oh. Flash peeking around the corner, but he gets spotted out, and Dream is there to capitalize on him. So all of LG is actually going to attack this position. That's banana, as you call it. Factor gets one. Sees the head, but loses the fight to Butters, who picks up his third kill. He's having a banner round right now. Factor gets the mark. Diffuser is surrendered. And he's going to see the sledge, but it's another for Butters. They'll trade, but it doesn't matter. Four kills for Butters. A huge round for Tempo Storm. And the first half of Bank will be 3-3. Three, three. So that was really just Butters fragging out. And uh, an even first half makes sense. Comfortable place to be for both teams. Winnable for either. The big thing I think that stands out to me was actually that very first round. Because when Tempo Storm managed to win the first round on basement, it changed the kind of tone of the match. And it's the sort of site that you expect the defense to take. We saw Luminosity put up a pretty good effort on their basement hold the first time around, but they just couldn't make it happen because of, again, the gamble that Tempo brought out. And that one gamble is, in my opinion, why this is a 3-3 and not a 4-2. Tempo, speaking of gambling, we'll be going to the top floor first. Now, I say that. I say it's a gamble. But in this case, actually, many teams like the top floor. Really comfortable here. Uh, many of them will start in tellers. We, we've got a differing opinion on each and every one of these sites. And uh, most of them are pretty pretty viable. You saw there in, when, when the uh, map statistics were brought up that a lot of these uh, sites share similar win-loss ratios for the attack and the defense. So that is... Uh, Another little interesting note to bring up. A castle being brought here from Tempo is going to greatly assist the reception hold. As you can see, two of them being placed on those reception windows. A third being placed by the double window, double big window. That whole room is weird. What do you what do you call that, by the way, Parker? That, that little room with the double window on each side and the doors on each side? I usually just refer to it as connector. Most people, I think, call it connector, yeah. I, I just call it connector. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's such an obscure call. A double window can make sense, too. But you, Well, I mean, it's, it's got four windows and two doors. Could call it six. Could. Yeah. Cease. But only some people are going to get that. So situationally, I'd say that's, that's connector. So we've got connector castled up. That's going to assist the hold inside of lounge and reception. So good use of the castle, I'd say, from Butters. Interesting to put your top fragger on the castle, but that's, you know, what Butter's role is, and he's just having a really good match right now. So that's, you know, that's okay. Butter's is a talented player. Very. His story that was discussed at USN a number of times is, is I mean... You want to enlighten everybody watching Inspirational, right so to speak. Yeah, I mean, he was just, he, in order to pursue his dream uh, of playing Rainbow Bob Six at a professional level, he was kicked out of his house, and he was living on some teammates' couches, and... Oh, wow. He, uh... The old saying was, you know, get Butters off the couch because he was literally living on a couch, streaming and trying to make it big. And now here he is playing for Tempo Storm and, and doing quite well, you know. And I'd say so. He's also a very nice kid. When I met him at USN, I got to say, he was a nice, he was a nice guy. It's so. good to hear. Oh, missed opportunity there from AWD. Doodle actually looks like he might have hit Butters, but in the neck as yeah. Butters has taken a bit of damage as his dream now, too. So he's chipping away. Mm. at the formation of Tempo Storm. Those head hitboxes are significantly smaller than they used to be. Yeah. Jumping flashbangs out as LG just pushes on up the main stairs. They've got Castle Barricades that will actually be a bit of protection for them. Butters doesn't take any damage, but there's Factor just rushing in. Two kills for him, three kills, in fact, for LG, as they have full control now. Wow. Creators and Filthy in a 2v5 with a minute to go. Luminosity will not be pressed for time whatsoever. Creator's down. This could be a flawless round, depending on what Filthy is able to conjure up. He misses oh. most of his shots. Oh, Filthy. No, you can't be doing that. You gotta hit better than that. Slash will be credited with the very final kill, and Luminosity will take the lead yet again. That flawless is... Round. Yeah, that is unfortunate there. It looks like the, the monitor got in his way. Yes. On the desk. It happens. It happens. And especially considering the Thatcher has, like, the same kind of color profile as the monitor, the back of that monitor you're going to be shooting at and then confusing the debris for the for the enemy. So, to play devil's advocate, it wasn't the uh, worst thing we've ever seen. But that is going to be a decisive round and a flawless one, as you said, for Luminosity. 4-3. Looking pretty good for LG. Now, it will be a basement hold next. And that makes sense because... Real quick, let's run through that last round. 
what happened. Now, I'm sure most of you, especially if you watched Europe earlier today, will note that many teams are attacking exclusively through the top, or sorry, rather the uh, exclusively attacking the top floor through the main lobby. And uh, that is mostly because once you take control of main lobby, you don't have a flank. Like there is, there's no flank anymore. If you get main lobby, that's, that's your beachhead, that's your platform for your attack, and all you need to do is have maybe one guy on repel, somebody lingering by ATMs or in the main lobby, making sure you don't get attacked from behind. Uh, if you're attacking onto tellers, that's gonna be either that's gonna be either uh, the uh, top floor. They'll be holding top floor from repel. If you're attacking on CEO, that'll be holding the bottom floor, like where we saw that Mozzie at the end of the round coming from tellers. That's it, and it's a really easy, it's the easiest flank hold because it's not really a flank. You can hold that and simultaneously assist the attack into the site. So it's a very efficient attack strategy. We're seeing employed quite a lot more. Um, and it relies on a lot of brute force tactics. But in this case, in the last round again, Luminosity employed those tactics very well. You gotta commend them for that. Now, Tempo, having none of it, will go back to, well, two for the first time, rather, the bottom floor. I think that CEO try was uh, not quite what they wanted, especially when you get uh, a flawless defeat. Yeah, no bueno. No bueno, that is very correct. So, Doodle's gonna do the exact same thing he did last time around. He's not even gonna drone on it, he's just gonna expend, uh, he's gonna expend some of that. Oh, this is a heavy realm, energy. by the this way. It's a very heavy realm. Look at that. I think there might only be one person. So this is what we were forecasting at the beginning of the match. But you thought maybe Luminosity would do that? Well, I thought No, I thought both teams. I said both teams would do this. I thought it would going to be... I mean, I we talked about how Luminosity have brought a lot... Well, have gotten a lot more structure than they used to have after they brought on uh, Slash. And I, I think they've maybe stepped away from strategies like what we're seeing right now. But they've still got it in their pocket. Tempo Storm, on the other hand, here they are, you know, bringing it out first thing on their basement defense. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see if it works. So far, we haven't seen any contact. LG is aware of it. Open area is the most important part of this defense right now for Tempo Storm. They have one reinforcement and a soft wall, Castle Barricade, and a Pulse waiting. Primed and ready at the top of Blue Stairs. So if LG doesn't drone this one out, well, you're in trouble. They're doing a lot of droning, though. Speak of. Trying to be careful. You have to be careful, but Dream just essentially gives his life away. That wall opened up earlier on. This looks like it's the shotgun from Pulse, by the way, in the hands yes. of Utters. And yeah, the M1 is, well. Macy was giving credit to it last time I talked to him about it. He was saying, oh, the Pulse shotgun's the thing. And honestly, it can oh. work really well. That's a bad flash from Factor. Factor flashed himself. Yeah. So. I, I have done that many times, but I also don't have to play at this level. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. Four remaining members of Tempo Storm as the opening pick goes to Luminosity are now down in the site. So, wow. They really don't waste any time with Luminosity now walking on in. None of the reinforcements down below. Once again, this was a very heavy roam strategy, as you had said. Mm -hmm. And at some point, Slash is going to need to go for the plant. He's on hard breach duty. C4 goes off, but he'll oh. just shrug it off. Takes quite a bit of damage, no other denial outside of a C4. What a swing from Crazy! Craters as well. Diffuser will not go down. There's a C4 and it's falling apart for Luminosity as Tempo Storm absolutely murders the push. Hyena now in a lot of trouble. He's down for the count. Rexon in a 1v4 and nothing. The opening pick goes to LG, but it's perfect from Tempo thereafter for them to tie it up too. These teams cannot shake each other one bit. We've only seen two, uh, one set of two rounds in a row, I should say, um, and that was Luminosity in the first half. They managed to win a defensive tellers and then bottom floor. Other than that, it's just been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We're seeing no, uh, like you said, no team be able to break away. That's an interesting uh, match so far. That last round was especially interesting because the denial that was brought was primarily C4s. The first one missed horrendously, and then the second one was very successful. The big thing from Tempo, which I have to applaud, is the way that they tried to retake on that plant attempt. To be specific, I'm talking about how they pre-fired the angle deeper into server, because that's where you're going to sit as an attacker to deny the C4s, to shoot those C4s mid-air. Um, and you saw the pre-fire come out from, I believe it was Filthy, who managed to deny that angle, which allowed for the C4 to come and deny the plant. So really good teamwork from Tempo. Uh, 
and yeah, that's prob that's the main reason why they managed to win that round. They also were successful, I believe, on their retake. We saw a kill from the Vigil, and I want to say that that was a retake of the main stairs, but we didn't see it, so it's hard to really tell. It could have also just been one of the players who was covering the plant from inside of server. Regardless, the big moment was really when Tempo allowed their second C4 to land on Slash. And, lest we forget, the successful roam from Tempo Storm. They lost one player upstairs. It was the Maestro, not a great player to lose, but the only one, and they wasted a solid two minutes. It's pretty good, even for a Maestro. Yeah, like I said, they got they got that opening pick on the Dream, and that was it. Nothing else from Luminosity. They lost every single gunfight. It actually looked like Luminosity didn't know where anybody was. It was uh, it's bad not even timing. Losing their gunfights, yeah, they they had really poor timing. If they had managed to pick off that pulse in the stairs, which would have been hard, they probably would have lost somebody in that process with the shotgun in play. But um, they probably would have, yeah, they probably would have been able to win that round if they got the pulse, because that's one more C4 off the board. And it was the actual, it was the pulse of C4 that was the fateful one that cost LG the round when they were going for the plant. You are being tracked. You are being hunted down. Yeah, it's... Jackal gets the footprints of the Castle of Creators, and then Ooh. a lot of damage being done to him, my, my. But no kill. Unfortunate there for Factor. I mean, you know, damage done, sure. Gun's still in play, though. It's, it's a Teller's defense. Looks like the Exothermic's on the wall, but there's a Mute Jammer preventing it from detonating, so they're trying to fix that right now. Bringing Rex in up into CEO, and he's going to open above the wall once it's been destroyed. Or there's actually just an EMP. Well, that's easier. Wall open. Yeah, you got Hyena playing on Thatcher duty, wall being open Attackers wide up, and then you can see Tempo Storm have seen this, so where do they go? They push back into open area. This is the same strategy we saw used by Luminosity in the first half. Thatcher looking for a drop, makes some noises if he's going to go. Thinks better of it. He'll head back and see some footprints, and because of this change to Jackal, he can still scan them from that range. Jackal's range used to be much smaller, if you remember. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous now, but you know, your footprint's cold, then you're not going to get scanned as many times, so at least there's that. Just don't walk. Yeah, just don't walk. Just don't walk. It's, it's I've had. Oh, oh no. Factor missing out on That's a very a time. Kill. Factor, how do you do that? But he gets it on the creators who has no choice but to push on up. Third time's a charm. Doodle is there to find one. He knows there's a second. Two for Doodle. Can he get the third onto the stairs? The Mozzie of Filthy will go up. The Jackal falls down. Another from Doodle who... Cole Phillips, as they call him, will do his best. Three kills, Dream in a 1v4 with Diffuser down for LG. Very difficult situation to find yourself in if your Tempo Storm and it's not going to get any easier. Round goes to LG. Big round there for LG, that's for sure. Um, of course, Doodle in the hallway. We got to talk about that. We managed to capture that action. But there's, other, uh, there's a couple other things that I really want to highlight. One, the smokes going down to cover the plant. That's big, huge, in fact, when you've got all of those angled uh, angles open up. That was by the Jackal. Props to him for that. Um, and we also saw the Thermite try to plant behind the printer instead of rushing deeper into Tellers on a suicide mission and dropping the diffuser, which is, the, which is a very stark contrast to what we were seeing from Tempo when they were attacking onto the same site. So really well-executed attack, I would say, from uh, Luminosity, not only because the Doodles hold in the hallway, Attackers but the smokes, and, and also the plant location. A lot of good things going right for LG. Tempo really struggled to retake that one. Now, it's going to be open area, which is, of course, a very interesting site whenever we see it played, which is infrequent. Frequently. What have you. Now, um, have this is a site that can be held, but it requires a lot of very specific things to be uh, available to the defense. Now, uh, I, I'd say the most important is information on open area. And with that information on open area, you can often deny the plant from kitchen, which is your main anchor point. But the other thing that it requires is at least some presence on the top floor from the defense. Now, the reason that this is required is because you need to deny the plant in open area primarily, um, and that is a difficult thing to do even if you have information on it. There's just so many little pieces of cover in there for the attack. And so what's the best solution? Well, open the drop downs above open. Well, that sounds weird, but it's what you need to do. And then you can deny the plant from there. And then you just have to have people upstairs to, you know, use those drop downs. And so you can see being used from, uh, or this is a strategy you can see being employed by Temple Storm right now. They've got a pretty decent roam upstairs. Two people right now, including their maestro, I believe. 
So he can either deny the push upstairs, the clear upstairs, or using his evil eyes, deny the push downstairs. Butters goes down, and the best player from LG, or the best player from Tempo Storm, rather, on attack, has been very quiet this second half. LG has been able to find and isolate him as effectively as you'd imagine. Mm -hmm. Oh, this might be an explosive rush into the castle barricade. Imagine they drone it out, see someone, use a Zofia lifeline to open the castle, then a stun right after. The great play from Crazy to take out the single hard breach of Luminosity. Slash is gone, but it's an archives defense, or rather it's an open area defense, so you don't need a hard breach as much as you expect. Doodle just looks the wrong way and gets gunned down from two separate members of Tempo Storm. It is insane for LG how close the members are of Tempo Storm. Hyena wins that one, saves Rexon's life. LG gets away with murder on that particular kill. That very much should have been dreams for the taking. On the other hand, though, LG has lost a lot of players on this take, and I, I gotta say, a um, big part of it comes down to really poor timing. There's more of that poor timing showcased as Crazy picks off Rexon. That was a cheeky pick there for, uh, for Crazy because he lingered by square at the top of before falling back to safety. Now, with one minute left, I'd say most smoke players are just going to fall back, but Crazy re realized his limits and fully exploited them. Looks like from below, a very long angle being used, but Factor will get the kill. Nice headshot there from Factor and good read. Despite the angle being extremely nasty, LG managed to make it work for them. They lost a lot of HP on Hyena, but it's not the end of the world. If they got the drop open, they can drop and plant. There's only smokes and C4 to deny. And I say only, that's actually, <laughs> that's a lot. So it, it, with the last 30 seconds, this is gonna be hard for Luminosi. I was gonna say, that's, that's still quite a bit for them if they need it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that's gonna be going in Tempo's favor is they haven't even had a single scratch yet. Waiting for the call for Factor to burst on in. Hyena will drone out and see that you can go, but the bottom of that wall has been entirely shot out. This is gonna be a major challenge. Factor trying to dislodge what he can. Fires into the wrong body, looks the wrong way. Filthy's there, Hyena's on so low HP. He knows that he's a dead man if he doesn't get off that defuse. He goes for frags, tie game. Could have maybe planted there. They gave him enough time if he stuck it. But of course he didn't know that. Like, you gotta be wary. Um, and even if he had stuck it, no way he's gonna win that with one, one bullet's worth of HP. He's gonna die in the post plane. So, doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, 5-5, five, five. and uh, as you said earlier, and this is this is continued. Neither of these teams can shake each other. We're looking down the barrel of a draw right now at, the, at this rate. It'll be a bottom floor defense from Tempo. Um, C4s, two evil eyes, smoke. So you got four denial operators and the Jaeger. They're going to switch out the Maestro for an Echo. That's fine. It's basically the same thing, just a little bit different. Uh, bu -bu you can also bring a shield on it if you really want to. Um because Echo needs more. On the attacking side, Defenders, protect your bombs <laughs> they have decided not attackers. to bring a Jackal, so they're not expecting a roam on this bottom floor. Also, a lot of tools that you really need when you're attacking downstairs, when, especially when there's a Habana uh, band. Are you saying that Tempo has those tools, or Luminosity? Mm -hmm. Especially when, no. Uh, yeah, so Luminosity, because you've got... Um, Oh, I was talking about Luminosity's lineup, and then I transferred into the tools that they need, and then Habana being banned, so it's like the attacking side, yeah. You gotta bring a Maverick if you have a Habana ban, because if you just bring Thermite, you're not gonna be able to open up nearly enough. Um, Maverick can get two dropdowns, um, but you have to be very efficient with this torch, and most players... Well, it's not a, It's not that they haven't learned it, because they have. They know how, Everyone knows how to do that. It's more that you have to be kind of dangerous when you're opening the drop in order to be perfect with the torch and get two. You can get shot through the holes you're opening up and usually it's better just to play it safe and open one drop down, make a small hole in another, and then, yeah. That's it. Great game from Factor so far on his team with 14 frags and we will need at least two more rounds so there's plenty of opportunity for him to continue to pad those stats. Mm -hmm. Slow day for the rest of the team, with the exception of I think it was fa uh, I think it was Doodle, who was in second. Yeah, there you go. Dream's the only one struggling right now on on Tempo uh, Tempo on the side of LG. Yeah, they're looking pretty solid. 
Slash has been moved to a primary hard breach role. He's not mm. been on that flex role that we've seen of him before, and he's been able to carry Luminosity in the past. Tempo Storm obviously much more. Even Butters has cooled off in the second half, as I noted. I mean, if I were Slash coming into this roster, uh, I, I would be on that role too. I think it makes it makes a lot of sense given his position. He's he's going to be really the the big brain on, uh, of the team. I would say the the one with the experience that's going to lead. If I'm if I'm looking at Slash going down to LG, I mean, he's also on hard breach because he's old. Yeah, he's an old. old Old player. In the wise words of Hot and Cold, I turned 21 and got put on Heart Breach. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's what happens. He's not even that. That's the crazy thing is he's not even really relatively that old. It's just that everybody, almost everyone in this match, is is really young. You either get dropped early or you live long enough to see yourself become a Heart Breach. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to put that's, it. That's the way to put it. So, yeah. okay, so drop number one opened up here from LG, and drop number two is they open up the server. That is because there is a hold on the blue stairs. They're trying to clear out the ADS here, as it has just been placed, interestingly. And another ADS getting placed. Filthy using the shotgun. M870 in hand is going to trick his own uh, ADSs. He's been successful in burning a lot of utility, and he's still there. Time being wasted by both Butters and Filthy. Now, two toxic canisters used with a minute to go. Grenade's not ready. Rex needs to get out of there. That was... A can. It was a... It was a Unprimed grenade, just tossed right. Very in. smart. Two from LG now as Butters falls as well. I, so I, there's no plant denial outside of the yokais and the C4s, of which there are probably two C4s and the yokais. So you know, just very minimal. That was really smart from Rexy. He threw the unprimed uh, grenade in there because nobody pushes on a nade, right? And in that situation, the Jaeger expected the nade to be attempted to, you know, an attempt to kill him. So he just wasn't ready for the push from Rex, and that's, that's very clever. Plant attempt number one coming down from Luminosity. And the oh, whole bad timing on the flash. C4 goes out, but it doesn't deny the plant. The slash is still sticking it. Dream will get one, but it's post plant now for the attackers. And Tempo Storm low on HP. Crazy's got a lot of HP to work with himself, but Dream is blinking away. And I believe the mute has just been picked up. So a 3v3, but only just, as Luminosity have both the post-plant and the HP advantage, as well as positional advantage with Factor inside of the server and Doodle up above. Nice shot from Factor. Dream on the floor. Crazy even eats a little bit of damage from that. Creators will get Doodle, though. Slash playing as safe as it gets on the top of Square, and it's just Crazy against two. Factor will get the final kill. Luminosity, another round and match point. Guaranteeing themselves one point in the standings, they will move up from fifth slash sixth, which is where they started the day tied with SSG, as they had the lowest round differential. Mm -hmm. But uh, it won't, it won't do much. It will just separate them from SSG. So they fifth is now firmly theirs, as they have one point. Every team in uh, NA has three points ahead of them, as there were four victors and four losers. In this case, you could also see Tempo Storm. They started the day in seventh with a minus three round differential after their loss to E United just a couple days ago. Well, they could tie here. CCTV going in favor of Luminosity. And it, with the exception of one round, or two rounds rather, this has been back and forth the entire game. Yeah, it really has. It's been a uh, really interesting one for sure, too. I, I mean, if, if that trend continues, of course, this will be a draw. Mm-hmm. Tempo Storm has yet to get two in a row. It looks mostly like Luminosity are slightly in the advantage, but only slightly. And I think the scoreline we have right now fully represents that. Um, it's hard for Lumi uh, for either team to really break away. It'll be a basement defense here for Tempo. Once again, they're going to try their luck. Looks like they might have a roam. They've got a vigil being brought. A mute as well could help on that roam upstairs. Castle, reinforcements, the rotations. Yeah, it's a hard, it's a pretty hard roam here from Tempo Storm. They're gonna try and be a little spontaneous, try and throw the curveball. It worked pretty well for Tempo the last time they used it. In terms of delay potential, Luminosity really were not confident in taking the fights to these roamers. If LG reads this roam though, there is potential for a more aggressive take into the site. Look at that, factor on 16 kills. Picked up two in the last round, and he was crucial at watching the uh, anti-plant after that diffuser goes down, or the anti-disable. One thing that's really interesting is factor was flashing when the C4 came out, and he was the person who was tr supposed to shoot it. And we didn't see what happened to that C4, but it didn't detonate. I didn't hear it go off. It didn't detonate. Might have got shot. Might have gotten shot. Might've it gotten could gotten be shot. the player who was throwing it died to the rush. 
There's a lot of things that could have happened, but I really want to know what did, because that was a really big part of the round. That last one, I, sh I should specify. So, Luminosity on match point, can they put this one away? That's going to be the question that we will have answered in two minutes in this heavy roam. Can what I... an angle. That is, that is quite the angle. Is that to ATM's door? I believe so. From Dream. Hasn't had the greatest statistical matchup, but has been important, at least on attack, for getting off the objective. Jeez. That's through the window there. Yeah, wow, that's like... Use plus, your words. That's all the way into the main lobby. That's pretty crazy. Or at least that, it no, seems cra to be. Crazy's playing in... Parker. With a, with a C. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he's got the K in his name, right? Yeah. So... Oh, that's almost a shot from Rexon on the dream. His position given away. You're in the wrong elevator for the hatch there, Rexon. But you try. This one's he's going up. The, he's also got the shotgun there in case anybody was in close range. So that's also a big part of why the skeleton key was out. He's been he's very thorough with his checking. Even if he expects something to be clear, Rexon is being very safe. Dream oh. from Kitchen gets two, and he's looking for the third. He'll down the third. That might secure the round for Tempo, as Doodle also goes down in Archives. Hyena will get one for his team, but now he's the last one standing on Luminosity. 50 seconds for Hyena to try and pick up Rexen. Let's see if he can make it there in time. Doesn't seem like Tempo's aware that there is a player down right now, which is fine. It shouldn't matter on the outcome. I think there was a lot of debris flying in the face of Dream when he mm. decided to drop down below, so can he do much with it? Who knows? We'll take a look. Oh, not going to be a lot of life left on Rex, and I think the call is being made to Hyena that, hey, you got 30 seconds. Wasting all that time to get me up isn't going to do much because we're only going to have 10 seconds to make anything happen. Yeah, he's got to go. He's got to go. Rex will bleed out. He's not even holding it down any longer. And Dream is going to be credited with that one. I had mentioned that statistically he was not having the greatest of matches, and, well, he gets three kills right there. And he could have a fourth if Hyena doesn't look the right way. But no. Down goes Dream. Hyena in a 1v3. Doesn't hold the diffuser. Not a lot of time. 15 meters away. And we got a draw between these two teams. One point apiece, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't matter if Hyena dies or not. Tempo Storm, they pick up a point and they need it. They still have not defeated a pro league team since relegations, but they come mighty close. A draw is as best as they're going to get for Luminosity, given the way that the community voted and what we expected of this match.